Hello and welcome to Sega News Bits. I'm Barry. With me is George. Like always, me here right now. <laughs> And, uh, you know, uh, unless there's some emergency news, we, we very well might be closing out the year with our dreaded or beloved, depending on what games you're looking forward to or uh, not, what to expect from Sega in 2018. So yeah, there's a lot of them. So let's get through them here. So first off, the big one, Yakuza 6. This is coming to the PlayStation 4 to America. So we are definitely getting this. We are getting that really cool, ultra-sexy um, After Hours edition. You looking forward to Yakuza 6? Of course I'm looking forward to Yakuza 6. I've been I've been liking, you know, Zero and Kiwami. I think they're cool games. Yeah. But I want to see this new engine. I want to see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And we got a little taste of that, too, in uh, the demo for Yakuza Kiwami 2, which is a remake of Yakuza 2. The demo's out on the Japanese PlayStation 4 store. Uh, unfortunately, it's still unconfirmed if it's going to be coming to the West, though we're pretty sure that it is. It's just that Sega wants to focus on Yakuza 6 and not... Because when Yakuza 6 was announced, remember, they announced um, Kiwami as well, correct? Yeah, the original. Zero. And Zero. So I think they kind of want to get through those games they announced before they start compiling announcement on top of announcement. Um, but, but I will say that they had a they had that, whatever is it called, like survey on their mm -hmm. website where they talked about how many Yakuza games you could take a year. Mm -hmm. I think them putting that out is a good sign. It's them trying to like saying, yeah, we have more Yakuza games coming. We just want to know how much you could take, you know? Right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I might say maybe the holiday 2018 season, we'll see that. Um, who knows? We also have coming from uh, the same team, Fist of the North Star, um, coming to the PlayStation 4. What do we know about this one, George? Uh, it's supposed to take the manga characters, obviously, and it's supposed to have its own story written by the people. And they even have the guy that plays Kazuma in the Japanese version play the lead character of Fist of the North Star. <laughs> His name escapes my my mind right now. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not, I've never really watched the anime, so I'm kind of excited to play this. Uh, they're also doing a lot of like Sega callbacks in this game, which I really love that the team does. Like you could find a outrun arcade machine in the desert and then play it, obviously. But they've done this in the past. But it's nice to see new fans, like people that liked Fist of the North Star, are not gonna now they're gonna know the Sega brand more at least. So. Oh yeah. So this is basically a yakuza vacation of Fist of the North Star, which could be a good thing or could be a bad thing. It's kind of like those Namco games where they release those Dynasty Warrior clones where it's like Zelda, but it's Dynasty Warrior. Mm. It seems that Sega's doing that now with Yakuza. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's unconfirmed if it's coming to the West. I feel like, again, that it is. I mean, if we're getting some of these really bizarre Atlas games, um, nothing, nothing against them, but, you know, like... We've got to be getting this. It's just a matter of time. Um, now, something that is confirmed coming to the West, Valkyria Chronicles 4. And this is coming out... Um, we don't have a date yet, but it's coming out in 2018 to the uh, PS4, Xbox One. Is it coming to the Switch? Yes, it's coming to the Switch. Wow, okay. So this is... Um, I mean, if you've been following the franchise, this is kind of... Uh, uh, whiplash because the last game was only on... Uh, what was it? PSP? Uh, the last game, yeah, the third one was on the PSP. Yeah, and so it's coming back to consoles, it's coming to nearly every platform, except for the PC, which is kind of surprising because the remake of the original game sold insanely well. So it could still happen, you never know. Um, it takes place during the original Valkyria Chronicles, but you're following a new squad, and it's snowy, and that's always cool. So... I'm definitely looking forward to that one. Can't wait for it. How about you? I'm looking forward to it too. We do kind of know when it's going to be coming because the Japanese people or people in Japan are going to be able to play the game on March on PS4. So what it seems to me is that in Japan, they're breaking up the date. So the, X, the Nintendo Switch version is going to come out later. There's no Xbox One version in Japan, obviously. Mm -hmm. And... The PS4 owners are going to get it earlier over there. I think in America, they're going to wait for all of them to be done and release it in one day. I think it makes more sense that way. I think maybe fall or summer. Okay. 
Um, another franchise that's making its return, at least in Japan, is uh, Virtualon. And this is called A Certain Magical Virtualon. And it's a combination of, um, of course, Virtualon and then a uh, light novel from Index, if I'm... Is that correct? And it's called no, A Certain... No, it's like no? Den- Denkai Bunko, whatever that company's called. Oh. That's who publishes where, it. Where am I getting Index from? Did I just pull that out of my ass? I have no idea. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, these things all run together. But to be honest, I I think that's kind of working against it here because I have no idea what that is, but I know Virtualon. So I feel like that is kind of working against it coming out here. We didn't get um, Virtualon Force. And so uh, I'm 50-50. I'm saying, oh, we did get the fighting game that was Mm. based on these characters, these anime characters. True, true. What I've been hearing is that this collaboration with Sega and how they're putting their brand yeah. in with Sega brands is that they want to make their games more or their IPs more worldwide. They okay. have some IPs that kind of they made it to the US and they've gotten moderate popularity, but they're nothing like Naruto or uh, yeah. One Piece or those kind of brands. I mean, I, I I don't mean to sound negative, like it's not going to come out here. It just it just seems like such a weird combination that a lot of people might be confused. But it all depends on how they market it. To be honest, I mean, if you just show virtual on gameplay, then I think people will be happy. A demo of this is actually coming out very soon, um, mid December. So, you know, when you're listening to this, uh, be on the lookout because there will be a demo hitting the uh, PlayStation Network. Uh, anything else you want to say about this one? Um, I do. I think a lot of people have been complaining that they kind of wanted this to be straight virtual f- on. And for what I've seen, gameplay, it is straight virtual on. It's just that the story mode is going to take these anime characters and they're going to be their plot with virtual on as nothing, you know? Because, like, virtual on games never had stories, so I'm all right with this. Yeah. And we'll see. If the gameplay is good, then let's... Bring it out here, please. Yeah. So those are the big ones. And then we just have some, um, you know, lesser known ones, things we just don't know too much about, things we don't think will make it over here, and some licensed games. So let's go through these real quick. Fantasy Star Online 2 Cloud. Now this is Fantasy Star Online 2 running on a PC, um, playing on your Switch. That's about it. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, nothing too exciting there. We also have Yakuza Online, which is going to be a smartphone game, and this is where the apparently the new protagonist for the series is going to make his debut. Uh, this probably will not come over here. Um, however, they have been talking about um, Shin Yakuza, which is unknown what that is. I feel like it might be Yakuza 7, but without the numbering, like they're just going to call it Shin Yakuza. It's probably smart to do that. Yeah, and then we'll have a new series with this new character. He looks like the opposite of Kazuma, like in every way, like different colors, smiling, frizzy hair. Uh, They probably took a little bit of the uh, the Goro personality and combined it with Kazuma. Because let's be honest, Goro's really becoming popular in the games. Yeah, very popular. So that's what I could see happening there. We also have Shining Resonance Refrain, and this is a re-release of Shining Resonance. And I actually, yeah, and I actually think this might actually come over, and I think it might be that weird Valkyria Revolution game where like nobody really (laughs) wanted because it was already bad or something. I mean, mean, it was already bad. So now they have people that I mean, because okay, there was an interview with the director of the game or whatever, and he said that. He promises this might be a worldwide affair, and we haven't had a shiny game come out in the West since 2007. Mm. And now that Atlas USA took over, I mean, I can see this is one of those kind of games that they would want to give it a chance. Yeah, but I mean, based on these new shining games, is that a promise or a threat? Like, is he threatening to release <laughs> it to the West? <laughs> I think that's what it is. He's like, you guys like sexy girls? Uh, no, no turn-based combat here, boys. Oh boy. Well, the good thing is um, we are getting some games uh, that will remind us of the uh, the classics with Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom. Now, this is coming off of the heels of um, God. What was it called? Wonder Wonder Boy. 
Wonder, uh, Wonder Boys and the Dragon's Trap. Is that what you're talking about? Or? Yeah. Yeah. It, it was so strange that this and that, and there was even a third game that just did, did not look good at all. Um, now, this I one... I think it came out. I think that other one came out. Yeah. The less said about it, the better. But this one, Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom. Now, this one's said to be like an actual sequel, um, a continuation of the series. They, I think, in response to the Dragon's Trap, they really put a li- they really put more money and time into it. The uh, new character animations look a lot better. The art style looks a lot better. I still don't think it's going to be as good as Dragon's Trap, but you know, more power to them for doing stuff with the uh, with the brand and the IP. What do you think of this game? I'm excited. We interviewed the guy that was working on the game, and he sounded really passionate about it. And you know, it's funny. A lot of the stuff that they talked about this game and what they love is kind of like they really love Wonder Boy 3. And it's mm-hmm. really cool that there was a remake of that. It was kind of weird because we interviewed them and then the, it, that other game was revealed. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like, I mean, I'm happy and I'm also happy that a lot of people are buying Wonder Boy. I've seen a lot of people talk about the, the new remake. Mm-hmm. So the brand is as hot as it's going to be. You know, it's not a, a super hot brand. Yeah. So be on the lookout for this one. I th- I think it looks like it looks very promising, um, and don't don't you know don't smack it down just because we already had that other one that everyone was praising. I think this one looks really good too. Um, there's this little indie game called Shenmue Three. Uh, I still don't know if it's actually being made. Last I heard, Yu Suzuki actually took the millions of dollars and went to a remote island and is driving around in a Ferrari. What do you think True. about that? I don't think it's going to come out this year. I mean, next year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, we could do a whole Sega News Bits just talking about where Shenmue 3 is at right now. Um, the last update they gave us was actually kind of depressing because they said, now that we're working with Deep Silver, expect fewer updates. In fact, we won't be doing the monthly ones anymore. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait. We didn't even have updates to begin with. Yeah. It was a guy in a hospital scrub who was like, Hello, I'm recording on Yu Suzuki's iPhone while he's not around. Let's look at five seconds of footage. Thank you for watching. Like, what? Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the project seems a little mismanaged, uh, but I won't knock it until I've seen actual gameplay, finalized gameplay yeah. footage. Yeah, so I mean, I, s- I still believe in Suzuki. I just feel like without um, all of the support they had with the first two games with Sega that it's going to be a very different experience. Um, Deep Silver is not Sega. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, some other games are getting a 3. Bayonetta 3 is going to be releasing, presumably in 2018. It's going to be a Switch exclusive, and um, I know we kind of we say it again and again at Sega Bits, but Bayonetta is a Sega-owned IP. So, so Sega makes a profit off of these. They don't do anything, and I don't know... <laughs> I think the only people that are actually missing from or losing from this situation is the consumers that own a PS4 and an Xbox One because Platinum Games is making a new game. Sega is making money without doing anything, and their brand is becoming more popular. And yeah. Nintendo's getting an exclusive for a Switch while they're fighting for like a more mature audience. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, sorry. <laughs> but I mean, if this made you buy... If you could, if Bayonetta 2 made you buy a Wii U, Bayonetta 3 is going to make you buy a Switch. And we've already been seeing that. So, um, you know, that's that's exciting. It gives you another reason to own the console. Bayonetta 1 and 2 are also receiving a Switch port. The We did a Sega News Bits about it not too long ago, so you can, you can watch that for more details. But essentially, it's the second one and then a digital copy of the first one if you're in the West. And in Japan, they're getting both of them um, as cartridges. I keep I keep thinking discs, but they're cartridges. They're little sour little cartridges that you can lick. So yeah, did did I miss anything? I think that's about it. Wait, where's Sonic? Where is Sonic? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's no Sonic for 2018, and you know that could be a good thing. You know? Yeah. Give it a yeah. Break. I mean, you know, looking at this, it's it's a very varied. Um, very Sega, classic Sega friendly. I mean, we've got we've got Shenmue potentially, uh, Bayonetta, Wonder Boy, um, Yakuza, uh, Virtual On, Valkyria Chronicles. Like, look at all of these Sega IPs that aren't Sonic. 
or even Sonic Team, really. Like, it's exciting. I think 20, I think 2018 is the year for grown-up Sega fans, you know? There's nothing kiddie here, really. And uh, I think it would be cool to see what kind of announcements. I think there's going to be a lot more teasing. I think 2015 had way less games. I think 2000, uh, 2015 had almost no games. And in 2016, we gave the game of the year to a 3DS game that was kind <laughs> of old already, right? Yeah. So this next year, I think we're really going to see Sega Japan grinding their gears in their new direction they've been moving towards, which is, according to them, their road to 2020, which is... Re brand new IPs and reviving old IPs. So we'll now, see I, what they got in store. I want you to, I know we're running long, but I want you to make a prediction, a crazy prediction. What's the craziest game announcement we're going to get in 2018 from Sega? Mm, I, I, for some reason, I have, I've been having this feeling, knacking feeling that we might get a new crazy taxi game. Mm, mm -hmm. What about you? I'm going to say that we're going to get a new All-Stars racing game. Ooh, that's a good one too. I would like that. So, what are you guys looking forward to in 2018? And we'd also like to hear your crazy predictions, or maybe you know something we don't. Could you give us any tips, uh, news tips? I don't know. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, tell a friend, hug your mom, hug your dad, call your grandma.